What is going on everyone? My name is Vincent. I'm back with another video and in this video, we're gonna be putting the Miata engine back into the car. Let's get started. So I've got the engine hung up on an engine leveler and this allows me to tilt the engine forward or backwards and in my case it'll be forward so I can tuck the transmission back under the firewall and get this whole thing seated properly in the car. Alright, to start off, what we're gonna do first is tilt this forward and then move this up just a little bit so that I can start getting the engine mounts lined up to where they belong on the car. Okay, so I've been at it for like two hours now and it, was, it just wasn't fitting so I ended up taking the transmission off and I'm going to try fitting it with just the engine first then I'll get the transmission in under the car. Yo, whoever said that it's easier to get the transmission and the engine in at the same time, they're a complete liar because I tried for two hours trying to get it in together, but now that I took the transmission off, I got the engine in in like 10 minutes. Okay, maybe they're not lying, I probably just did it wrong, but I finally got the engine in and the transmission is sitting over there. So I'm gonna get the starter back on, then get the transmission on. Okay, so I actually ended up pulling the engine again just to get the starter mounted up first and that's gonna make putting the transmission in so much easier because I don't have to struggle in that small space to put the starter in. Okay, so I know this is not the prettiest angle, but I'm putting the motor mount bolts on. They're both 14 millimeter and they're torqued to around 42 to 50 foot pound, I think. Okay, there we go, that's one. Oh. Alright, now let's get the transmission in. Alright guys, it's actually the next day now. I couldn't get it in last night, so I'm gonna give it a shot today. And what I'm going to do is get under the car and basically lay the transmission on myself, work his way up there, and try to get at least one bolt in. After I get one bolt in, then it'll hold itself in place and then I can work on the rest of the bolts. Oh, okay, so I finally got the transmission in. It's in the car now, it's bolted up. I've got all the bolts torqued down. And now we're gonna start on getting the power plant frame on and then get the drive shaft on. Then we're probably gonna fill up the turret and get the shifter back on as well. Okay, so these are torqued to around 77 to 91 foot pound. So I'm gonna go to 85. Okay, I've got the PPF bolts torqued down now and I can finally take the hoist off of the engine and let it sit on its own weight. Okay, so I've got the drive shaft now and this part called the yoke goes into the end of the transmission. Just kind of line it up. I might have to twist it around a bit. There you go. All right, I'm gonna get one bolt in first just to keep it in place. Then you're gonna wanna get the rest of the bolts in. Okay, so normally when you turn these bolts, the drive shaft is going to want to spin with it. So what you want to do is put this into a low gear like first or something like that. And that should prevent the drive shaft from spinning when you're torquing it down. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and fill the turret with some transmission fluid. And just get a funnel and carefully pour it in there. I would say to pour enough transmission fluid to get it around an inch and a half below the edge of the turret. Then you just go ahead and place the shifter in there. And these are all 10 millimeter bolts. There's three of them. They don't really have to be torqued, just snug them down. Okay, so now that the shifter is installed, we're gonna get the top shift boot on. 
and it's a good idea to get some white lithium grease or some sort of lube in here just so we can slide this down all the way. There we go. Okay, so after we got this pushed down, we're gonna get four 10 millimeter bolts in and I recommend starting at the top so you're able to pull this down later and stretch it out or else it's kind of hard to line up the bolts in the end. And at the bottom, this bracket goes on top of the shifter boot. Okay, so I finished putting the shifter back on and I've already connected the neutral switch and the reverse switch on the transmission. So now I'm gonna start by filling up the transmission with fluid. The way I'm filling this up is by having a funnel connected to a tubing going down to the fill hole. And I'm doing this because I don't actually have a fluid pump. So the tubing goes all the way down here and into the fill hole. And you'll know when to stop filling this up when there's a little bit of fluid leaking out of the fill hole. And try to make sure that your car is on level ground. Okay, so it's pretty much stopped dripping now and I'm gonna go ahead and put the fill bolt back in. You could use a 14 millimeter box end wrench to get this in. Okay, so now that the transmission is filled up and bolted shut, I went ahead and installed my slave cylinder and that has two 12 millimeter bolts, one at the bottom, one at the top, and they're both torqued from 12 to 16 foot pound. So the front end of the transmission is basically done now and I'm heading to the rear this is the differential and I'm going to be refilling this as well. I forgot to say this before, but whenever you're draining and refilling something, then you always want to check if the fill bolt will come loose first. Because for example, let's say you drain all of the fluid out, then you go ahead to refill it and this bolt doesn't crack loose, then you have no way of actually getting fluid back into whatever you're refilling and you're kind of screwed at that point. Okay, so let's get this out of the way first and I got a breaker bar. Let's see if it breaks loose. Ah. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I broke the fill bolt loose and now I can 100% fill it up after. I'm gonna go ahead and drain it now and I've got a drain pan so we don't make a mess. Oh. Okay, so it's basically stopped dripping now so I'm gonna go ahead and put the fill bolt back in and this is torqued to around 36 foot pound. I forgot to say that the drain bolt is a 24 millimeter and the fill bolt is a 23 millimeter. So now that the drain bolt is back in and torqued down, I've taken out the fill plug and I put a tube going in. We're gonna fill this up the same way that I filled up the transmission. And we've got a funnel up here. I'm gonna fill this up with differential fluid now. Okay, so it's dripping a good amount now, so I'm gonna take this out and then let the rest drain back into the pan. Now that it's basically stopped dripping, I'm gonna go ahead and put the fill bolt back in and that's also torqued to around 36 foot pound. Okay, now that the differential is done, I'm gonna go ahead and get the exhaust back under the car too. This part over here actually attaches to the exhaust manifold and this bracket right here connects to the bell housing using two bell housing bolts. Under the car, there is a rubber mounting bracket here and one over there as well. And you put the exhaust into those brackets. I wanna do that first so it can hold its own weight up so it's easier for me to mount up the downpipe and the bracket on the bell housing. That's one. I managed to get one of the rubber brackets in and then the other one wasn't really fitting so I ended up lining this up first since that one rubber bracket was holding the whole thing up for me. I got one of the belt housing bolts in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the second one in and get the manifold bolts in as well. All right, I finished bolting everything up here and I went ahead and put this bar back and I've got both of the exhaust rubber mounts hooked up now. So let's head to the back. All right, I've got the left side of the brackets in. Now I have to get the right side in. Now 
Now I'm just gonna tighten up this clamp over here. All right, that's not going anywhere. Okay, now that the exhaust is installed in the car, that's basically all the heavy lifting that I'm gonna have to do under the car. That is gonna be it for this video, and in my next video, I'm gonna go ahead and try hooking up all of the electrical connections and all of the hoses in the engine bay, and try to get this thing running. So, if you guys wanna see that, don't forget to subscribe, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.